This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform where you can create your own website. Today, we're building something that is super useful in any woodworking shop. Well, you already read the title and clicked on the video, so you know what we're building. We're building a big router table. Now, when researching what sort of router and router lift combos are out there on the market, I came across this thing. This router and router lift combo is called the OFL 3.0 and is made by Souter Shop. The whole thing is basically made out of super heavy duty machine parts. It comes with this really powerful router and the coolest thing is that the whole thing can tilt up to 45 degrees, allowing you to basically cut any angle between that with just a single single straight router bed. Now full disclosure, it was me reaching out to Sutter Shop, asking them if they wanted to collaborate on this build. They didn't pay me any money for this, but they did send me the router lift, router, and a bunch of other bits that I'll be using in this build free of charge. Now this is gonna be a super fun build because in addition to a bunch of woodworking and getting to play around with this thing, we're gonna use both laser cutting and 3D printing to pack this build full of as many features as possible. But before we get to all that, let's start by building the big frame that we're gonna put all this stuff into. Right, just like so many other builds, this project is gonna start by building a cabinet out of 19 mil MDF. I'll use MDF for this build because it's super dimensionally accurate and stable, so we don't have to worry about a router table that starts warping with changing humidity or temperature. All these parts are gonna turn into a cabinet where all the bits go into, and as a work top, I'm actually gonna use this piece of leftover tabletop. This is actually what's left over from my motorized table that I cannibalized and turned into this motorized mechanism for my laser cutter. It's pretty thick and it's coated with this really slippery and fairly durable surface, which is going to be a perfect combination for our router surface. So let's put all these pieces together into a big cabinet. It's going to be super straightforward. I'm just going to follow my drawings here. Oh, and by the way, if you want to build a router table just like this, I'll have both the drawings and all the 3D files for all the bits that you'll see throughout the video and be able to download from our website, which is alch.shop. All right, let's put this thing together. All right, this is going pretty well. Although, yes, I am currently unscrewing parts because I just realized I was about to build myself into a corner because I want to have these drawer slides on the inside of these really narrow gaps. And instead of struggling a ton installing them after the fact, I'm gonna install these now, then install this guy back in and then keep doing that for the next pocky here as well just to make my life later on in this build a whole lot easier. Oh, and yes, I'm using these types of door slides, even though in my last video I said these are my least favorite ones. I'll explain why in just a bit. Now, <laughs> you see how that was a whole lot easier than trying to reach in there with a screwdriver after the fact? I've only got a few of these bits left before you can start on the fun part. You may have also noticed that I'm using a lot of pocket holes to put stuff together. I'm mainly using those for the bits that screw into the top surface because I don't want to have any visible screws on the top. Everything else I don't care that much about because I'm going to paint the whole thing after the fact. Oh, and to make all these pocket holes, Souter Shop actually also sent me one of these new Craig pocket hole jigs that self adjusts to the thickness and has a dust extraction port, which is great. Basically does the same job as the small one, just a whole lot easier. All right, all the important bits are on. All we're missing is a back piece to clean everything up and give it a bit more rigidity. This thing really doesn't need to be big, so I've cut a six mil sheet of MDF. I'll use glue and brightness to attach it on. We're really getting somewhere. We've got our frame, the frame's got wheels, and you may also have noticed that I've covered up all the ugly MDF edges with some nice edge banding, because although MDF has a ton of benefits, looking good, is not one of them. So now that this whole thing is starting to look really nice, I'd say this is a pretty good starting point to start putting fun bits inside of it. We just need to open that hole back up. Currently, this thing is just a fancy tool car. The next step that will turn this into a router table will be to install this whole thing. And to do that, 
I'm gonna have to use this handheld router. Here's a pretty cool comparison though. This handheld router, which by the way, I'm super happy with and is plenty powerful, has about 900 watts of power. This thing has 1600 watts and will spin up to 30,000 RPM. But before we get to take advantage of that, we're gonna need to cut a hole that all this can fit in. And to get that hole super accurate, Luckily, I have a laser cutter. So I just cut a template that with the following attachment on my router will give us the exact right cutout for the top of our router base. I'll clamp it down here and then I can super easily just router out the whole pocket. Before that though, I'll remove the bulky material with the jigsaw because all the stuff on inside doesn't need to be super precise. It's only the outside lip that's gonna matter. Well, <laughs> That was just a bit more messy than I was hoping for, but we're done. By the way, I didn't quite trust just the two clamps here to hold it steady enough, so I used some double-sided tape and securely taped this whole thing down to the tabletop. Now, let's see if this actually fits. This is the very first time I'm trying this. I've not tried it off camera yet. And I really hope I didn't screw up. <laughs> All right, it fits. <laughs> I'm really happy with that. But to properly get everything adjusted and aligned, I'm gonna have to get this thing back off. Oh, at least that was easier than my tabletop. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and watch the video where I put a new work surface on my work table. So the way we're gonna install this is actually pretty neat. The kit comes with this frame, which will sit at the bottom here and the whole assembly goes right on top of that frame. And the reason for that frame is so that these little leveling screws will have something secure to push against because this whole frame is made in a way that it's actually height adjustable in every single corner using two screws in each corner so I can get everything perfectly aligned with my work surface. And then when I'm happy with that, there's four big screws that go all the way through the plate and the tabletop and lock in the bottom with some locking nuts. Just tighten up the last screw here. Everything looks good. And now it's officially a router table. And this was also the perfect time to give the whole thing a nice kind of paint because now we're going to start attaching all the cool bits and pieces to this frame. The first thing we're going to do is install the drawers that are going to go in all these empty spaces. We're going to have a total of five different drawers in this thing, two really small ones, a medium sized one, and then two really big and large ones with the nice bloom drawer slides. Now you might remember that I've already installed some drawer slides in this. Thing. You might also remember that I previously said that I don't really like these types of drawer slides, but in some applications, they're actually really nice. So what I've done here is actually installed both drawer slides on the same side. That will allow me to install just a single sheet of plywood. And this now turns into a really tall, but really narrow drawer. And this surface is gonna be perfect for storing all of my different router bits and attachments. And then we're gonna do basically the same thing on the other side here. Only difference is that instead of just one skinny piece of wood, <laughs> I've put together this thing which is just that same backboard with just two additional shelves built into it. But we're gonna install it the same exact way with two drawer slides on the same side, just like this. Let's install the last two drawers, which are gonna be a pair of these big drawers. These are the same exact ones that I built for a ton of other projects. They use the Bloom Movento drawer runners. And in case you wanna know how to build these, you can go back and watch my previous video where I go to detail how to build these and a bunch of other types. I actually built these out of scraps that I had laying around in my workshop. That's why they have a combination of ash, birch, pine, and oak in here. I put these things together using some pocket holes, which made it super easy to assemble everything super quickly. All I need to do now is install the drawer runners in the frame. I'll also have to install the small orange locking bits onto the bottom of the drawers and then I can just slide them in until they lock in place. Man, I just love installing these drawers. All right, now that all the drawers are installed, it's time to start on the front for these. And we're gonna start with the one compartment that isn't a drawer, that is the one right in the middle here, and it is gonna get a door. This door is super important because it is what is gonna allow us to seal off this entire compartment where the router sits so that we can keep all the dust that is generated in here from getting all over the workshop. I've already drilled the holes for the hinges and installed those in the door. And into the cabinet here, I've installed the counterparts to those hinges. So now I should be able to just snap those in place and we have a door. Now, as you can see, this door is currently soft closed, but these hinges actually have a little button thingy here that when you press them, turns the soft closed door into a hard closed door. 
And now that we've got our door installed, we can use it as a reference to align all our drawer fronts. So I've already cut all these out. And by the way, I've already sanded them and given them a nice coat of oil. So all that's left to do is install them. And to get all these drawer fronts properly aligned, I'm going to try a new trick. I'm going to use my hot glue gun, apply some hot glue to the drawers, stick on the front, align it properly and hold it in place until the glue sets. Then I should hopefully be able to pull out the drawer and properly secure it in place with some screws. All right, hot milk glue, definitely my new favorite way of attaching drawer fronts because you get just a little bit of time to adjust the drawer before the glue hardens. Now onto the two last drawers. Before I attach these, we need some handles for them. Luckily, I've done quite a few projects in the past where I made custom drawer handles. So for this project, I'm just gonna reuse some of the old ones from my previous project. For the small drawers and the door, I'll use these ones. These are from my previous video where I showed you how to make drawers. And for the two big drawers, I'll reuse the ones from my welding table. Now these actually need a pocket routed into the front where I can glue this thing into. Normally, I've made that pocket using this 3D printed router template and this 3D printed guide on my router, but I figured I got a laser cutter. So I cut out the same exact template on my laser cutter in two pieces, glued it together after the fact, and now I've got the same template, just this one is way quicker to make. And just like I've done in the past, I'll route out a pocket in my two drawer fronts. And then once that is done, I can install the fronts onto our drawers that are already in our cabinet. And then you know what? I'm just gonna use a little bit of hot melt glue to securely attach the 3D printed handles into our drawer fronts. And the smaller drawer handles will actually just screw onto the fronts, just like you would with any other drawer handle. Huh? This is pretty nice. Sure looks a whole lot more finished with the handles attached. Quick tip though, if you're gonna build one of these, attach the handles first because I had to take the fronts back off because the screws are directly behind the shelf. And I should probably also point out that this is pretty fancy hot melt glue. So if you're gonna attach the handles, use construction adhesive or something like that. We are sure starting to get somewhere. The next part is the router fence. Now this is a Craig router fence that Sour Shop also sent me. This thing comes with everything you need and it's pretty easy to install. I'll have to install this to the underside of one of the sides. That's also the reason why I have the overhang on the right side of the tabletop. On this side, it's a little bit more work. I'm gonna have to route out a channel that this locking handle can go into. And now it should just be a matter of inserting this pin into the hole. The other end goes onto the track. And we have a sliding fence that you can lock on both sides. And it feels pretty sturdy. Now the last major thing that we need to install is this track that's gonna go into the front here. I waited with this until now because I'm gonna use this fence as a guide for my handheld router. And by using this as a fence, I know that the slot I'm making is perfectly parallel to that fence. Right, so this router table is essentially finished. If I wanted to, I could install the router and start using it right away. But I'm afraid that that would generate a ton of dust. And right now, I don't have any good solutions for getting rid of that dust. But that is gonna change because I 3D printed a whole bunch of parts that are gonna help me with that. I'm gonna use a combination of these 3D printed parts and this vacuum hose to collect as much of that dust generated as possible. That's also why I put so much effort into sealing the compartment that the router sits in. I've even put a little reddish sealing strip around the edges because I drilled a hole through the back wall of that compartment onto which I'm gonna screw this 3D printed part. I'll connect the vacuum hose to the 3D printed part. Other end of that hose, I'm gonna connect to this Y coupling. The Y coupling then gets attached to the back of the table into this slot that I made using a hole saw and a jigsaw. That way I can connect the top of this Y coupling with another piece of flexible hose that will go into the back of the fence. And then to the bottom of this Y connection, I've attached a longer piece of this hose with an adapter. This adapter, will perfectly fit into the standard vacuum cleaner hole. I'll have dust extraction both from inside the box where the router sits and the back side of the fence. And then when I'm not using it, this whole thing just neatly tucks away in here. I mean, you know what guys? We are ready to start using it. I've installed the router and I've also spent a little bit of time organizing the contents of these drawers. Now on this side, I have all the additional bits that go onto the slot and the fence. So I've got two of these things. These are to help push the material up against the fence, a stop block and a finger protector thingy. But that's not all I've done. Are you ready for this? So I have all of my router bits neatly organized. This was actually super simple. I just took a strip of wood and drilled the right sized holes in them and then attached them to this board. Everything on top here is eight millimeters. 
I have some six millimeters down here. And then the really big ones I've got on the bottom of this drawer. This one is 12 mil, which is the biggest the router can take. I only have one, but at least I have some room to expand this in the future. You may also notice that I have this red thing. This is a little 3D printed piece that holds all four different colors that I have, as well as the tools to change it. And this cute little rotating handle that is used to raise and lower the router itself. So let's try that. So that little handle goes in there and then I can raise and lower the router. And boy, let me tell you, this is just super easy and super smooth. All right, so let's insert the router bit. Call it and call it not goes on. Insert the router bit itself. And then I just love the fact that you can reach everything from the top. And then once this is tightened properly, lower it back down. And it comes with a selection of these plates so you can get support super close to the router bit. Right, so I haven't actually tried this thing yet. So let's do that together. Now, in order to plug it in, Souser also sent me one of these safety switches. This thing ensures that if I ever disconnect the power and plug it back in, that the router won't start automatically. But I really didn't like the way this thing was supposed to be mounted, so I just hot glued it to the side. Yes, I'm putting a lot of faith in my hot glue. Now, the way I'm planning on using this thing is that I'll actually plug my vacuum cleaner into this thing and then onto my vacuum hose that goes to the router. I've taped the power cable for the router. Vacuum hose goes in there, power cable in there so that the vacuum automatically starts when the router starts. All we have to do is plug the extension cord. So now in theory, if I click this button, put the vacuum cleaner and the router start. By the way, if you're planning on doing it this way, just make sure that the vacuum cleaner is able to handle the load from the router. All right, let's try this thing out. Uh, <laughs> I would definitely call that a success. <laughs> MDF is usually super dusty, and I would say that it removed like 99% of all the dust. All right, so this is a pretty standard thing to do with a router. But this thing has a couple of more cool tricks up its sleeve. So let's try those out. The whole router itself can actually tilt backwards up to 45 degrees. Now that will offset the router bit really far backwards. So there's two more handles in the back, which allows you to adjust the whole router backwards and forwards. Tighten everything back up. And then for the top, there's a set of these plates with slotted cutouts that will perfectly fit onto a router like this. <laughs> a little bit more dust, but hey, that's a pretty big chamfer. And I didn't even need a chamfering bit. Now we could also, instead of doing a 45, do anything between that and negative five degrees. So you might remember that on the tabletops for a small table that I made and on the floating shelves that are on the wall there, I made really shallow chamfers on the bottom. I really love the way that looks, but in the past I've either had to make them on the table saw or by hand. But I think this thing is perfect for that. Now I don't really have a big enough router bit yet, so I have to order that, but we can try out the principle just with a little bit smaller of a chamfer. Tilt this thing to something like that. I'll just raise the router as high as I can get it. And let's try this out. <laughs> Although it's a little small, that definitely worked. Now I just have to order a bigger and longer straight router bit and I can make these Super easy without having to do that sketchy setup that I did on the tables all last time. Man, I'm pretty happy about this thing and I'm sure I'm gonna use this a ton in a bunch of upcoming projects. Now, if you also wanna build one of these, I'll have all the plans and all the 3D files I used available to download from our website, which is alch.shop. That is also a perfect segue to a quick ad from today's sponsor, Squarespace. I have a website where I can share the things I create, like the plans for this router table with you guys. And I built that website using Squarespace. Now Squarespace enabled me to super quickly and easily create my own website. It's really easy to set up. You don't need to have any technical knowledge to choose from any of their award-winning templates and get started creating your own website right away. And Squarespace has the tools you need to get your business off the ground, including e-commerce templates, inventory management, a simple checkout process, and secure payments. On my website, I sell everything from build plans to 3D files, but whatever you wanna sell, Squarespace has the merchandising features to make your products look their best online. There's also no limit to how many products you can list in your site. So I'm not only able to sell the plans for my projects, but I also have a bunch of free 3D files for you guys to download. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash A-L-C-H for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, so I'm obviously super happy with the way this build turned out. And I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. 
If you're not yet, make sure to subscribe and ring that bell to get notified every time I upload something new. As for now, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye. Oh, I forgot. Now I have to clean up.